Hey, I'm Patrick Sweeney. Welcome to another episode of Live Big. It's Christmas time in Boston, so that means only one thing. Scuba diving for scallops. I've been diving for 25 years and I've dove in some cold water, but I've always used a wetsuit. I've even taped up the wrists and ankles with duct tape to try and keep that cold water out if the water's been cold enough. So what I decided to do to live big this time of year is go to Boston Scuba and get certified in dry suit diving. Today we're going to go through the class and then we're going to jump in the water and it's cold. There won't be much living big today. I've always wondered, is it really safe? Because I've heard horror stories of people's feet filling up with air and rocketing to the surface with no way of controlling themselves. So I'm going to go through the dry suit certification, do the coursework, and then do the cert dive. And you guys are going to come along with me. Hey Patrick, Jim Sullivan. Jim, nice to see you. Tell us uh, a little bit about the dive shop. Sure. Uh, Boston Scuba is about almost four years old now. Uh, we specifically kind of focus on dive charters. We actually have a dive boat right from the marina here. Uh, we've been running charters out of the marina for almost 10 years. Well, tell us what we're going to do uh, this afternoon, what we're doing today. Sure. Well, we're going to be doing the academic portion of the dry suit class. Uh, just kind of learning about the different types of dry suits, the materials that they're made out of, um, um, some repairs and whatnot, buoyancy characteristics of the dry suit. And, um, and then we're going to try some dry suits on and um, you know, try for fit and seals, of course. We've got to make sure one of the things with the dry suits is we're going to Not the have edible kind. What's that? Not, not, the, not the edible kind, kind no. <laughs> uh, seals that go around our wrists and around our neck uh, to keep that dry suit dry and keep that water out. Yeah, I feel like I'm being born. Yeah, kind of like actually <laughs> the other way, yeah. <laughs> Pop it out. It's just popped out. Um, that feet first uh, ascent is real. Uh, it could happen. Um, you have to be kind of careless a little bit, I think, for it to happen. But I, I've, I've heard of cases of it happening, and uh, um, you can potentially rock it to the surface feet first where there's no way to venting air from that suit. Of course, the, the thought was that you could be upside down, uh, not able to you know, reach the surface, um, and breathe off the air in your tank and eventually <laughs> drown, you know, just kind of feet, feet, you know, feet first. Hanging, hanging hanging up. Up. Well, the boat's just about to leave, so I'm going to grab my gear, jump on board, and get ready to jump in this near-freezing water. My big test is going to consist of three things. Recovering from that feet up situation, taking the inlet valve in and out off of the tank that connects to the dry suit, and then taking my buoyancy compensation device on and off while in the water. If I pass those three things, I'm going to pass this dry suit certification. It's a pretty short 45 minute ride out to some of the islands where the scallops are great and there's a couple shallow sections to do the dry suit testing where it'll be a safe environment. That's why I'm going to set you guys all up with your own dive flag. I'm going to have an own flag and walk you down the... So, I'm nervous, but I'm about to step off and go down and do the test. We're going to dive down about 20 or 30 feet and I'm going to go through the buoyancy and emergency buoyancy recovery. So the first thing is pivoting on my fins. Get to a buoyancy point, touch my fins to the ground, and then I should go up and down as I breathe in and out. I got that one pretty good. But the next one, that's that dangerous thing I was worrying about. Letting my feet get full of air and the bottom of my dry suit fill up with air. Now I've got to recover. It's not pretty, but it's effective. I get out of that situation and I've got the emergency buoyancy recovery one done. So we can check that one off. Now you can see how quickly he takes his hose in and out from his air tank to the dry suit. I've got to pass this test. I got it undone. I'm pulling it off. Now I'm putting it back on. You can see it's not quite as easy as he makes it seem. Eventually, I get it on. I'm going to give him a thumbs up. Now he's going to give it a tug just to make sure. And yep, I've got that one. The third one, taking the BC on and off, I've done tons of times in other certifications and practice, so that's an easy one. It's pretty exciting as I sit in this 35, 40 degree water to know that I've got all three of them done now, and that means only one thing. I'm now a PADI certified dry suit diver. 
With the first dive done, I can move on to dive number two, and that's trying to get some dinner. I promised my wife I'd be back with fresh scallops from Boston Harbor. So we go out to the depths on one of the shelves and we start looking for scallops. With all these scallops, it's time to start shucking. It's a lot of work for that 45 minute ride home. Surprisingly, on the way home, we found Mr. Fat Jack's cousin who'd run out of gas in the middle of Boston Harbor. We're gonna give him a tow in and earn some good karma for the day. I get in just in time to try some fresh scallops and have an ice-cold Guinness. Oh, Mama's going to be happy when I come home tonight. <laughs>